it's time for our spotlight on semiconductors. We've heard from uh, AMD and NVIDIA and announcing some new chips and lots of developments in this group overall. Caleb Silver is with us, editor-in-chief at Investopedia. Caleb, good morning to you. You're watching this news on NVIDIA. So many folks have uh, investments in NVIDIA. They want to hear more about this. Yeah, big week for NVIDIA. That big stock split coming up on June 6th, that 10 for 1. That's going on. But not to steal any of its thunder, big announcements at the Computex Tech Conference in Taipei. NVIDIA launching the Rubin AI chipset on Sunday. That is going to replace, eventually, its older Blackwell chipset. But also AMD revealing a couple of new chipsets for both desktops and laptops. The AMD CEO, Lisa Su, saying AI is their number one priority, Nicole. Whose isn't AI the number one priority these days? That's where the money's at. So AMD going to battle against NVIDIA, against Intel in the chipset war for AI, desktops, PCs, and servers. And when you talk about that that uh, move to the newer chip and uh, Blackwell, you know, it, that, that transition has been pretty smooth from what I understand, and people are very happy with that. But it also brings demand for the newest chips. People want the newest ones, right? Yeah, and AMD and NVIDIA have pledged that they will develop a new chip, release a new chip every year. NVIDIA used to have a two-year cycle for new chip releases, especially around AI, but then they realized how hot demand was. So now the CEO, Jensen Wong, saying they're going to release a new chipset every single year. AMD trying to match that. Intel, we know, is coming out eventually with Lunar Lake. Qualcomm Snapdragon is out there. There is a lot of competition for AI data uh, chipsets right now for the semiconductors, but they're aiming their them all over the market. So you have the desktops uh, for uh, the 9,000, the Ryzen 9,000 for AMD, also announced this week, this weekend in Taipei. But you also have a, uh, NVIDIA targeting that sector as well. But then it's the servers, right? It's the data centers. That's where the real money is. So you've seen NVIDIA launch a couple of products aimed at that center as well. Yeah, overall, um, when you talk about the AI chip kingdom, um, and who, which companies dominate and, you know, as they jockey for position. I mean, obviously, NVIDIA has been a leader, the leader. Where do we stand? What do you watch there? Yeah, NVIDIA, if you just look at the server centers, right, uh, NVIDIA has a 65% market share there. So that's a heck of a head start and a heck of a moat. Intel's next with about 22% of that market. And then AMD with 11%, a lot of market to grow there. And we know demand is going to remain strong for these uh, centers, these data centers. They got to do all the processing and the storage of our data. That's where the, you're going to see a lot of big profit margin there. That's why you're seeing the big chip makers targeting the data centers for that revenue. But they're not stopping there. It's desktop. It's uh, it's laptops as well. So everywhere you look across the ecosystem, whether it's the server centers or the laptops on our desk, these uh, chip makers are fighting for dominance there. But NVIDIA has the biggest lead, and investors have responded to that. If you just look at this year uh, so far, the market performance, it's NVIDIA, and it's NVIDIA alone, basically the winner among the chip makers. I wanted to um, bring up two headlines. One is about Qualcomm promising new chips that will power unprecedented battery life. That's from today. I think a lot of people have had Qualcomm on their radar in the world of chips. But I'll go back to last week. AMD, uh, Taiwan Semi, Broadcom, and other chip stocks hit by Biden's fresh AI chip export restrictions. This has been an ongoing story. Um, you know, does that jump out at you in any way? I think it's more a symbol than it is a real policy that's going to affect sales here because this does protect a lot, the U.S. chip makers in a lot of ways. What he's trying to protect against is imports coming from other countries into our market. He wants to protect that. You've seen massive multi-billion dollar investments led by the Biden administration to create new chip manufacturing facilities throughout the country right now. A lot of those, again, symbolic, but they are real. They do take about 10 years to build, but he's very serious about protecting the dominance of chip makers here in the U.S. So we know that is happening right now. And 
But you got to remember where a lot of these chips are made. NVIDIA and AMD, for as prominent as they are, they don't make their own chips. Taiwan Semiconductor makes these chips, and they are based, of course, in Taiwan, one of the biggest companies in the world. They're pretty much sitting in the catbird seat in terms of manufacturing, but in terms of market share and the moat around these AI markets, which are so important to these companies, NVIDIA has a big dominant lead. We know Qualcomm Snapdragon is there, but Intel, AMD, they're all chasing the leader. The leader, of course, is NVIDIA. Yeah, I mean, and look, I think about all these names, but what people don't realize is that Qualcomm is there. It's supplying semis for Microsoft. Um, also, that they have these new chips that will allow customers to operate their laptops without uh, concern about the battery life as much. And, um, you know, they're calling it groundbreaking. I'm not sure anybody sort of had Qualcomm on the list, or did they? Well, they're they're the OG chip makers, so they should have them on their list. And yes, the battery life is important because what does AI do? The processing, it eats up a lot of battery power. It eats up a lot of battery power. That's why we need more server centers. That's why you see utilities getting this extra life too, because we're going to need a lot more utilities to power these data centers. But Qualcomm has been there all along, and the battery life is an issue. But in terms of the chips that actually help with the processes that AI is supposed to enable, well, you have these other leaders right now that have been taking advantage of the fact that a lot of these other players were slower to market. They're all chasing NVIDIA. That'll probably be the case for the next few years. Yeah, and look, this is Taiwan's AI tech fest. Um, so we'll continue to listen up for any any um, news from that, but they all had to come. It was a big deal from what I understand for all of these companies, but this is how Qualcomm at least, um, and others, they're trying to battle Intel from what I understand to reduce the PC sector's reliance on Intel. Um, we recently had on Dan Ives and we were talking about the $4 trillion market cap and he was talking about Nvidia, Microsoft, Apple, like which one will be the first one to get there. But anyway, final thoughts here on this group overall that just doesn't quit. Yeah, it doesn't quit. And this is revolutionary, right? They are making the chipsets for the way we will compute going forward into the future. If you take it back 30 or 40 years to the launch of Microsoft, even longer than that, it was the fact that Gordon Moore and the folks at Intel and others had produced a chip that could operate so quickly, right, it be, gave a computer into our own hands. It launched the personal computer revolution. AI chipsets are kind of like that, too. Not as easy to tell when you're right in the middle of it, but this is all revolutionary, and a lot of these companies are going to use words like groundbreaking. These are groundbreaking developments, and we're going to feel them yeah. for the next several years and decades. Right. As editor-in-chief, you caught that. Right. Groundbreaking. That was their word. I like that. I like that you caught that. And I think that was good. That was good, Caleb. Thank you so much.